Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is May 26, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. The entire country is mourning the loss of 19 children and two teachers after 18-year-old Salvador Ramos opened fire at Robb Elementary School in Texas. Earlier that day, he had shot and wounded his 66-year-old grandmother. According to Uni Turatini, a human connection expert and the award-winning author of The Mystery of the Lone Wolf Killer, the massacre in Texas was the 27th school shooting this year. Although Uni believes access to guns should be regulated, she does not believe that stricter firearm regulations will stop the problem of mass shootings. Welcome to the Feisty Uni. You've done the research into lone wolf killers and what motivates them. Why did this happen again? As a society, what are we doing wrong? We are, I think, all in mourning today and trying to make sense out of why so many children and also the, the two teachers had to be murdered so brutally and sudden. And it just doesn't seem to make any sense. But here's the thing. Tierica, is that we need to understand what's going on in the minds of these killers. Here we're talking about an 18-year-old boy who, who I believe killed his grandmother and then went on on this shooting spree in, a, in an elementary school. And the problem here, Tierica, is that we are facing a loneliness epidemic. This is the young man who has been struggling for years. I have been um researching hundreds, hundreds of these very similar mass shootings around the world globally. And what we're seeing in all of them is that they suffer from loneliness. They feel so disconnected. They don't feel that they have a sense of belonging in our society. And also there's a lack of sense of purpose and meaning. Like, what am I going to do with my life? Does my life even matter? is trying to make sense and he can't make sense of it. And he feels so disillusioned and desperate to prove that his life matters, that he is even willing to turn into a mass killer and, and in a way commit a super suicide is what I call this, is where he's willing to, he wants to die basically, but he wants to go out with a big bang and take as many people with him as possible. Thank you, Uni. Are there signs that we can look for so that we can recognize someone who may be on this dangerous path? If so, is there anything that we can do to deter them? He seems depressed and he might be obsessed over weapons. Maybe he's um, searching for weapons online. He's also researching and searching other, you know, other mass shooters, in you know recent mass shootings or mass shootings that have taken place where a lot of people were killed if you're at school with someone like that with a young man like that reach out to the the school you know the, the principal to the authorities ask them to 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 bring this person in so they can talk to him, the school psychologist to talk to the person see try and see what's going on and then they can reach for for help uh, from that point on, that's what I would do if you are in school with such a person that you are suspecting is going through something really serious. Uh, also, if you uh, are friends with or, or you know someone, you're in class with someone like that, also try and reach out and, and invite them to, to do homework together. You know, even just not mentioning something that is is that you think something is going on, just try to include them, just casual, include them, ask them, do you want to do homework together one day? Do you want to grab a coffee? Uh, do you want to sit with us at lunch? These are all very little things, but that can make a huge difference in the life of someone who is feeling really lonely and separated and isolated. Did you know that three out of five Americans are struggling with loneliness? The antidote to loneliness and emotional, social isolation is connection. 
You're so right, Uni. Thank you. This society does a great job at creating mass judgment and pitting everyone against each other and nothing to promote inclusion. It's up to us to create a world where no one feels left out because they don't fit in. We have to try. Maybe one day we won't have to mourn the loss of so many because one person felt hurt that they didn't belong. In other news, Pastor John Lowe of the New Life Christian Church and World Outreach Center located in Warsaw, India, tried his best to downplay sexual abuse at the end of his service by announcing that he had committed adultery more than 20 years ago and then apologized to his congregation. As the congregation applauded Pastor John for his bravery on admitting his sins, a woman and her husband walked onto the stage and took the microphone. She told the congregation that their beloved pastor had had sex with her when she was 16 years old. Let's watch her confront this disgusting abuser in a clip from the viral video. Amen. For 27 years, I lived in a prison. It was not 20 years. I lived in a prison of lies and shame. Lying to protect the Lowe family. For years, I thought I was a horrible person having suicidal thoughts, not realizing what had been truly done to me, that I was a victim and I would still be in a prison if my brother, and many of you know him, Edgar Wolf, had not approached me just two weeks ago with what he had seen as a teenager that bothered him all these years. His pastor in bed with his younger sister, a t-shirt and underwear on. People knew but were too afraid to come forward, and they have now. The lies and the manipulation have to stop. I was a prisoner and you kept me in your prison. I'm a prisoner no longer. I was just 16 when you took my virginity on your office floor. Do you remember that? I know you do and I have plenty of other stories that I could bring to your remembrance. You did things to my teenage body that had never and should have never been done. If you can't admit the truth, you have to answer to God. You are not the victim here. I tried to tell someone, but all that was done was cover up. This video went viral, not only because it reinforces the notion that men in authority abuse it by abusing women, but also that this woman, who's remained anonymous, has done something that most abuse victims do not get to do. She confronted the abuser directly, face to face in front of everyone. She had once felt shame being around. I love it when she said, you are not the victim here. Why do we protect abusers? We have to speak up. If you have been a victim of abuse in any fashion and no one has believed you or would listen to you, I want you to reach out to me. I will have you on the fight scene. You can share openly who did it and what it did to you in your life. I know this is a lot, but it needs to be done. We have to let these abusers know that their deeds will be told. Take the shame away from yourself and give it back to them where it belongs. Don't hold it anymore. Reach out to me. Share your story on the feisty. Abuse is not a secret. In other news, two wine entrepreneurs are giving women a chance to become more sophisticated while also giving back to their East Oakland community. Let's talk about Erica Davis and Katherine Carter, the inventors of The Sip, a subscription service that helps novice wine drinkers discover their palate by using technology. The SIP offers a bi-monthly subscription billed annually or bi-monthly for users, which allows them to sample a variety of wines sent to them six times a year. Once buyers receive a box, they can go online to rate the taste and their ratings are automatically included in a vast database to predict which wines to recommend next. I like that. So far, the SIP has featured more than 55 diverse brands and the women have created a program to encourage sales by donating 16 ounces of water to a local charity. They're also offering $10,000 grants along with the opportunity to learn about sparkly wine, retail marketing, and retail operations for people who want to get into the wine business. I'm loving this wine tasting concept and the opportunity to support new wine entrepreneurs. To get your subscription to the future of wine tasting, visit thesip.com. Excellent work, ladies. Well, it's time for a break. It's 2022. Should women still be changing their last names after marriage? Why are these parents suing their son for more than $600,000? Answer to these questions right after the break. Be right back. 
My heart for homemaking flows through my hands and to each knot of my work. My name is Natalie and I'm the owner and maker of Fringe and Free. I started my business because I wanted more home decor handmade with natural elements. My style is earthy, minimal, and warm. I want to express life, peace, and joy. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the couple in India who are suing their son and daughter-in-law for not giving them grandchildren? <laughs> the petition cites the expenses of raising their only child, as well as paying for the couple's honeymoon and buying them cars. We have to talk to Manikuran, our special correspondent from India, to help us understand what is going on here. Welcome back, Manikuran. Did you hear about this lawsuit? What does this mean for women in India? Hey, T. Erica. Um, yes, this is certainly bizarre that the parents have actually sued their children for not giving them grandchildren. But this is not the first time that parents are uh, interfering in the lives of their children. In our country and in most Eastern countries, it is very common to see parents getting involved in all the important decisions of their children's life. Uh, it can be about their careers. It can be about raising a family or, uh, you know, um, moving to a different country for work. All these things are a collective decision of family and never that of the individual. Uh, particularly talking about uh, giving grandchildren, it uh, I think it is happening because um, uh, continuing your bloodline has been sanctified in a lot of religions and in a lot of cu cultures in my country. So uh, if you're not uh, continuing your bloodline or you're not having a family that's actually considered a sin. Um, it's, it's exactly like how some of the most developed nations in the world are still talking about abortion laws or LGBTQ rights. That's because all these things have been considered a sin in, the, in religion for thousands of years. And when anything is linked to religion, it becomes very, very, very difficult to talk about it rationally. Also, talking about women particularly, I feel that living in a patriarchal society, women all over the world do not have rights over their bodies. And every time a woman decides to have a baby, it's generally not just her decision. A lot of parties are involved in it. Certainly, it's possible that a lot more parties are involved in the Eastern countries, but I think it happens all over the world. So women have been conditioned for thousands of years to be good mothers and good wives. And if they're not doing that, they are looked down upon in the society. Uh, they're considered an outcast. Uh, I feel that that is what feminism uh, is about. It is more relevant today because it provides for safe spaces to have open debates and discussions so that our future generation has more autonomy around their lives, around their bodies, and can be free to live the type of life that they want to. Thank you, Maniki Don, for helping us to understand the Indian attitudes towards women. I'm so glad that we have you here speaking out and bringing attention to the issues that Indian women face. The more you speak up, the more they'll speak up for themselves. So come on back and let us know how you feel. In other news, since the United States does not have royalty per se, our celebrity culture has to make do. <laughs> One of the members of our royal family, Kourtney Kardashian, got married in Italy this past weekend and it looked like it was a blast. However, the feminist squad took note when Kourtney changed her last name to include her new husband's name and they were not happy. Writer Victoria Richards created the headline, no woman should be changing her name after marriage in 2022. Well, I'm not really the feminist police, but I have to step in and, and nip this statement in the bud. That statement should actually read, every woman should do whatever the f she wants to do in 2022. If it makes you feel good and proud to change your name to his after marriage, go right ahead. The only qualification for feminism is honestly equality and treating everyone fairly. As long as you do that, you are a feminist. Let's keep moving forward. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. 
women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Here we go. Welcome to the feisty. News for women. <laughs>